for this video, we are going to grab some data using PCG and transfer it to Houdini, specifically some terrain data. And the thing we don't want to do is to load in the in, in, in enormous height map from our landscape every time we're cooking an HDA, because that is a little bit excessive for what we want to do. Instead, we are going to make this thing over here, which is a blueprint, which places a bunch of boxes using PCG, and it will place them on the terrain, and we can easily bring this information to Houdini. It's very quick, and this makes your assets a lot more interactive. So let's dive into it. There are two components we care about. We have the blueprint and we have a PCG graph. So let's first make our blueprint. I'm going to make an actor. Call this test BP. And let's grab this and add the necessary components. So we will be needing a spline component that is add a line and let's drag it around a little bit so it's the right shape the right initial shape go let's make it closed default and we need a pcg add it I'm not going to go in too much on PCG because that's a very, very broad topic. Just uh, use it and I'll go over the right settings to set up this graph. We won't dive into that too much. All right, we have our uh, set up. Now let's make our PCG graph over here. Let's hold it just graph this that's graph is what needs to be inputted over here because in the blueprint we have a graph input and that's where we're going to input it and there. perfect and now we can modify our From the input, we will be needing the landscape what we don't care about, and then we need uh, to get some spline data. Get spline data, and we are going to do a spline sampler. And this node will now be sampling our spline. And let's get some visuals in here so we can quickly see what's going on. Placing a static mesh spawner. For the static mesh spawner, we're just gonna choose a basic cube to be placed, which needs this one cube, shape cube, same cube. There we go. Save this. And let's see if we are already getting some needed visuals by dragging this into the scene and there you see we have some cubes being placed on this spline we actually want them to match to the terrain and they are not doing it right now we also want them to be placed more you know a grid shape because that's easy to transfer to houdini and to then to make a proxy terrain mesh from so to do this, let's go to this, uh, this sampler and let's set it to be on interior. Right now we don't see too much stuff going on. Let's first of all make it larger. Let's say this is unbounded. That's important. So now we kind of have a grid filling. 
these also need to be a little bit smaller. So I'm going to do friends or points over here. There and this there and this thing. And let's set the scale. Right now it is a maximum scale and a minimum scale, both set to one. We're just going to make this point one. All of those. Now we have some smaller cubes, kind of invisible below the terrain. And we need to project these, so we're going to use this projection node. This is what we want to project. And we want to project it to the landscape. Here. Right now we have our cubes placed on top of the landscape. Done with PCG, so it's pretty quickly adapting and changing. And you could imagine yourself dragging around this line or even automatically generating an area where you want to sample this and then send this information to Houdini. Now let's try and load this in Houdini and make a proxy map. Let's dive into Houdini and make a very simple scatter HTA. So in the geometry context, let's make a subnetwork. This subnetwork will have input the world outliner. And this will be our PCG graph. And we will have a The geometry we're going to throw in. Let's make this a asset. And let's say this is a header tool. And then put it over there for now and create this. Minimum input is going to be two. And fine. Parameters. We don't think we need anything for this simple tool. Create this. And now we have our simple scatter tool. I'm going to close this again. Grab this HTA. Throw it scene. And from here, I will add this to the scene as well. This is scattered to open session sync. You can see doing a thing. But right now it shouldn't really do anything. It's just an empty scatter. Uh, and that's totally fine. Just need our input to be correct. So we have our world input, which is going to be start selection. I'll select this blueprint, it's current. And then we have to select the second input, which let's check if we actually go through this open session from Houdini. We have this other node set up over here. They allow editing. Ah, of course, I'm missing one output, so let's change this right now. And now we have a, sec a second input. Perfect. Let's save this. And let's rebuild so we see this thing appear in Unreal. And now we have our second input. And over there, I'm going to add a. What is this? I'm going to scatter. Let's just do this beam for now. also do this with a data table but that's in a different video all right so let's go back to Houdini and now you can see we have our two inputs first of all we have this plane this on one hand it's a curve on the other hand it's our boxes which are clamped to the terrain and we have our 
beam of wood. All right. Allow editing of this thing again. And let's make sure that we are only keeping those boxes. See, we have one, one large area. We can just last zero. And then we hide all other things. We are left with only boxes. And those are the ones we want to do something cool with right now. Let's grab the centroids of our cubes. Bring our devs. right then I want to transform this down make it flat perfect okay connect and pieces we know the distance between our points that way stable Prints. And it's work now. Right. Right. Oh, let me find that node name. Rehydrolize but a triangulate to D. That's the one. And now we can, we already have a, a pretty good shape. We can do this a little bit better by, well, for now, let's actually do fine. Let's just do a quick copy and get the highest values back in there. So we get our original points over there because the point numbers have not changed. We should be able to just copy over the position if my point numbers change. Let me have a double check that my point numbers change. Of course, from the centroid, so I need to use that one, of course. There we go. And there we have our proxy mesh for our terrain. Now let's do a scatter, finish this tool, and let's do a copy to points. Points and the mesh itself. And we have our very, very simple scatter tool set up. Again, it's not about the scatter, it's mainly about using PCG to catch the terrain. Let me put this to the real. Hopefully I'm not generating too many meshes right now. Probably should have picked something a little bit easier, but let's see. There we go. And here we have our scatterer working on the terrain at the correct height using PCG.